Hi, in this video you're going to learn how to use the Get Data feature in Excel 2016. It's a great feature for importing data directly into your Excel worksheet, whether it's a new or an existing worksheet. You can get data or import directly from files such as Excel, CSV, and HTML, databases such as Access and SQL, tables, the web, ODBC, and so forth, so making it easier and quicker for you to share your information. What I'm going to do is go over the step-by-step -step instructions for you to use the Get Data feature in Excel. I'll show you how to get your data and put it into an existing worksheet as well as a blank one. For the examples I'm going to show you, I'm going to be getting data from a CSV file, a comma delimited file. So for the first example, I'm going to be getting the data and importing it into an existing worksheet. So as you can see here, I've got an existing worksheet open. Now in order to get my data, I need to go to the Data tab to open up the Data ribbon. So when you click on the Data tab, it's going to open up the Data ribbon, and from here you're going to go to the Get and Transform Data group. This is where all your features are for getting data. It lists some of them in the quick steps, such as the From Text CSV, From the Web, From a Table Range, Recent Sources, and Existing Connections. But you have a lot more options that are available to you if you click on the Get Data dropdown. From here, you've got your From File, which expands out and shows you the different types of files that you can get data from. From Database does the same thing, expands out and shows you all the different database types of files you can get from. Your Online Services, other sources, combined queries. You can also just launch the Power Query Editor, work on your data source settings, and also your query options. But like I said, for the example I'm going to go through, we're going to be getting data from a CSV file. So I'm going to come back up to From File and come over to From Text CSV. Once you do that, it's going to open up the Import Data dialog box, and from here you would navigate out to find your data file. I have an inventory list that I want to import in, so I'm going to click on it. Now you can either double click on it to open it right away, or highlight it once and hit the Import button. Either way, it does the same thing. Once you do that, it's going to open up your file in a separate window so you can set all the options for loading the data into your worksheet. What we'll do is we'll start at the top left and work our way down to go over all the features that are available. The first thing is the file origin. You can choose a different file origin if you need to. Delimiter. What the delimiter is, is what divides the columns of data, what you've used to divide it. Like I said, for the example I'm using, I have a comma delimited file, so commas is what I've used to delimit or to break up my columns, and so that's what's listed here. If you use something else, you could choose one of the other options that are available here. If you don't see your option available, you can use custom. So for instance, if you had set your file up with pipe delimited, we would come to the custom and you would insert pipe. And then it would divide your columns up based upon any time it hit the pipe because that's what you use to delimit your columns. You can also use a fixed width. So if all your columns are the same width, you could tell it what size the columns are, and it would divide the information that way as well. But like I said, for this example, I'm using comma, so I'll go back to comma. If we move over to the right, we've got our data type detection, and this is how it determines what type of data is in your file. By default, it's based upon the first 200 rows. If you click on the drop down, you can do it based upon the entire data set, or you can tell it not to detect the data types. We'll leave it at the first 200 rows, and now we're going to come down to the bottom. If everything's fine and we don't need to clean our data or do anything else with it, we can go ahead and click on the Load button or the drop down next to Load and choose to load the data or Load to. Now if we click Load, what it's going to do is it's going to automatically dump the data at the beginning of the worksheet. And that's what you would use if you were loading it into a new worksheet because you want it dumped at the beginning. If you're loading it into an existing worksheet, what you want to do is you want to choose Load to. So when you click on Load To, what it's going to do is it's going to open up the Import Data dialog box, and from here you have some options available to you. Also, if you wanted to load it as something other than a table, such as a pivot report or pivot chart, you would come into here as well and choose that. The area we want to go to is where it says, where do you want to put the data? This is where you would click Existing Worksheet, and you would tell it exactly where you want to import it. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to tell it we want to import the data at the end. So we'll come down here and click and say OK. And now you can see it has imported the data at the end. And that's how you would import or get data and load it into an existing worksheet. I'm going to show you another example of loading it into a new worksheet and also how to clean the data. So I'm going to switch over to a blank worksheet. We're going to go back to our data tab, come to the Get and Transform Data group, click on our drop down for Get Data. We're going to do our file again and choose our text CSV. Open up our file. Here's our file. Again, we could change any of the options at the top, but what I want to focus on here for you is the clean data. Clean data, if you click the button, does exactly what it says. It's going to clean the data or go through and allow you to manipulate and make changes to your data. When you click the button, what it's going to do is it's going to open up your file in the Power Query Editor so that you can make whatever changes you need to. And you can see I've got a lot of options available to me. So for instance, if I needed to get rid of some columns or rows, I could do that from here. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of columns one and two. First columns highlighted, shift click on the second column to highlight them both, and I'm going to come up and tell it to remove the columns. Now if I wanted to make sure there were no blank rows, I could come to the remove rows and tell it to remove blank rows. Once I've done that, it's gone through and removed any blank rows, and you can see it removed the row from here, which is fine. I just wanted to make sure there are no blank rows throughout my data. Once I've got everything set up the way it needs to be, I can come over and click the Close and Load. And what that's going to do is it's going to close the Power Query Editor and load it into my worksheet. So when I click it, there we go. Now I'm going to go back into it for a second. There's one other thing I want to quickly show you. So let me load up my data again. If after cleaning I needed to load it into an existing worksheet, I could click the drop down and tell it to close and load and I would get my import data dialog box so I could tell it exactly where to put it. So you have that option available as well when you're cleaning your data. So that's how quick and easy it is to use the Get Data feature. Remember, it's on the Data tab, the Get and Transform Data group, and you have all your options available to you. From files, databases, online services, other sources, combined queries, and you can also launch the Power Query Editor to create your own as well.